Hi to all, how's it going? With this video, we will actually start the CNC series that, uh, that's been long awaited. We will start by modeling the, the alumin uh, aluminum extrusion that the frame is built of, and uh, this will be a more beginner friendly tutorial. I'm using Link Stage 3 from uh, Real Thunder, uh, but uh, the same steps can be easily followed uh, in uh, FreeCAD Master also. Although this seems like a pretty complex uh, model, uh, you, we can actually analyze it and see that we have a lot of uh, symmetry lines. And during the um, actual modeling uh, of uh, our component, we will take uh, great advantage um, from that. So let's get uh, right in. Start by creating a new file and uh, let's move to the part design uh, workbench. As you can see, we have an uh, exterior outline and the, the um, width uh, of uh, this uh, extrusion is uh, actually 50 millimeters and we will start by modeling this. In our file, let's create a new body. We will create a new sketch on the XZ plane. Click OK. And uh, let's start by creating a rectangle. Right click to dismiss the tool you will see that uh, i have the constraining tools here on the left side of my screen but uh, you perhaps have it uh, like this i pre i prefer to have them uh, here because uh, it gives me a little bit more of uh, vertical screen uh, real estate select these two vertices and the center one press s on your keyboard for symmetry we will select this edge and this edge and press E for a uh, equality constraint and then select the top edge press shift H on the keyboard and we will give it a length of uh, 50 millimeters click OK and close your sketch now with our outline sketched we need to actually extrude uh, the length of our aluminum extrusion so let's pad the selected uh, sketch, we will choose to pad it symmetric to plane and I will choose to have it something like 200 millimeters. Click OK and to because we are using link stage 3 we can take advantage of the shadow display mode which will help us uh, better assess our scene. Now, if we take a look at uh, our um, component, we can see that uh, we need to start sketching the, uh, the pockets that actually form our uh, extrusion. If, uh, if you analyze this pocket here, you see that um, we have a symmetry line and we will take advantage uh, of that uh, during our sketching. And we also can break uh, the outline of the pocket in more primitive shapes. So we will create another sketch. We will choose always the XZ plane. Okay. And as a first step, we need to import some geometry from our previous pad. So click on the external geometry icon and choose this edge. If you click this icon here, uh, we will align our view again to, um, to, the, ske um, to the sketch normal. We need to um, switch uh, the toolbar to the construction mode, choose the rectangle tool. Let's create the first rectangle that uh, represents this opening here. A second rectangle that uh, represents this opening here and we will sketch the bottom line so choose line and sketch the bottom line right click to dismiss the tool select the two vertices of the topmost uh, rectangle and the y axis of the sketch click s on your keyboard for symmetric so select these two vertices here and uh, the Y axis of your sketch, press S for sy symmetric. These two vertices here, S for symmetric. 
we need to create a tangent range between this vertex and this imported uh, line here. Remember, this is the external geometry of our extrusion. Select this vertex and this line, press Shift-O on your keyboard and you see that uh, the rectangle is now overlaid on top of our geometry. Press Shift-V for a vertical constraint and we will uh, type in four millimeters. Now we'll do a similar thing with uh, the second rectangle. So select this vertex and this line, Shift-O for tangent. And this one as well has a height of four millimeters. So press uh, Shift V for vertical for a vertical dimension, four millimeters. Now I've already measured the distance between the top of our uh, extrusion and the bottom of this pocket, and it is 14 millimeters. And we will set that right now. So click this vertex and this vertex from the bottom line, Shift V for a vertical constraint and 14 millimeters you can move your constraints um, dimension out of the way for a better view of the sketch if we take a closer look uh, at our sketch we see that we have another small pocket in the top wall and uh, we will sketch that as well we will create another rectangle Select the two vertices and uh, lastly the Y axis of the sketch, press S on your keyboard and we have a symmetry line. I know that uh, this uh, edge is, uh, has a height of uh, one millimeter, so we will give it a vertical dim dimension. Shift V on your keyboard for vertical, one millimeter. Let's just move this out of the way. Let's go ahead and give a dimension to this also vertical dimension 1.5 millimeters and we're pretty much set up one dimension that i forgot uh, i've uh, the forgotten to give is this one and uh, shift h on your keyboard this this one is 10 millimeters this edge that uh, represents the actual opening here on the top is 8 millimeter shift h for a uh, horizontal um, constraint and it is 8 millimeters wide notice how, uh, how the constrained uh, edges uh, turn uh, light blue we need to give a horizontal dimension to this edge here also so by measuring i know that this is 22 millimeters wide and of course we need a horizontal dimension for the bottom edge as well and this one should be 10 millimeters so now that we've the, actually managed to block out uh, the whole outline of our uh, pocket it is time to actually draw the working geometry of the sketch so create uh, choose the create polyline tool and by hovering over the vertexes of the construction um, geometry start sketching Now if we closely look at this area here we see that we have a small step and this one was not uh, actually taken uh, into account when we sketched uh, our construction geometry so we will sketch it right now. Let's do this sm small step and go ahead with our sketch. Remember this. Notice how our sketch isn't uh, fully constrained because we uh, because of the small step that uh, we've uh, modeled in this area of the sketch. So we will go ahead and constrain uh, this one also. Right click to exit uh, the current to uh, the current tool. Select this edge uh, because it lacks the vertical constraint. Press V on your keyboard. Let's control the other one and these two seem to be okay. Let's select the four edges here. 
and we will make them all equal by pressing E on your keyboard. Of course, you can always use the, um, the icon uh, tools toolbar here, but um, once uh, you get the hang of the shortcuts, it is really a lot faster uh, to work with uh, sketches. Select one of the, the edges and shift H for a horizontal constraint and we will give it a dimension of one millimeter. And with this, we see that our sketch is fully constrained. Close the sketch. Let's uh, reshow our pad and make uh, the actual pocket. We can see a preview of, uh, of our operation. These two options are, um, at least for now, present only in the link stage free branch. But anyway, we will choose to make a symmetric to plane uh, pocket and in the type we choose to make it uh, through all. Press OK. Taking a, a look uh, at uh, our object uh, here, we can see that we have two symmetry lines and uh, we can take a great advantage of this. So we will uh, take our last pocket and we will choose to create a polar pattern. As the axis, uh, FreeCAD has chosen the normal sketch axis, but we can actually choose the base Y axis for in this case, and we need four of them. Click OK to exit uh, the polar uh, pattern uh, tool. It is now time to go ahead and create uh, this uh, second uh, pocket uh, here. We will choose to adopt a strategy similar uh, to the previous one where uh, we will take advantage of uh, construction lines. So let's create another sketch. We always choose the XZ uh, plane. Okay. And we will create our helper geometry uh, comprised of this rectangle here and an edge that will represent this kind of leg that uh, stems uh, from it. We need to again import some geometry from the previous feature of our model, so click uh, the external geometry icon and import this edge. Right click to dismiss the tool, switch uh, the toolbar to construction mode by pre uh, pressing, um, by clicking this icon we will create a rectangle and then we will create the edge that uh, stems uh, from, uh, from it. Right click to dismiss the tool, select these two edges, press A for an angle constraint and we need, uh, of course, we need to have a 135 degrees angle between uh, these two edges. If we look uh, at our um, extrusion, we see that uh, the wall thickness here is smaller than the wall thickness that uh, we've uh, had previously in the previous uh, pocket. I've actually measured it and it is two millimeters, so it's time to block the rectangle. So select this vertex and this vertex. Shift H for a horizontal constraint, two millimeters. Select them again. Shift V for a vertical constraint and two millimeters. Uh, we need to first make these two edges equal to actually have a rectangle and uh, we will give uh, a height to our rectangle. So shift uh, V for vertical, 10 millimeters. Take a look at this pocket here. We see that we have an arc here at the bottom and the, the diameter of this arc is actually the distance between these two edges and measuring it it is a four millimeter uh, diameter so if we measure the distance from this angle here to the bottom of this um, arc we only need to um, subtract uh, two millimeters of radius and we will have the distance that uh, separates this uh, arc center to this uh, vertex to give a dimension that is not vertical or horizontal, we actually use this tool and uh, its shortcut is uh, Shift D. So Shift D, we need to give it a length of 20 millimeters. Now that uh, we have our helper geometry sketched uh, up, we go ahead and uh, outline the actual pocket um, geometry. So re-switch the toolbar to normal um, geometry, choose the arc tool, 
start by making an arc that is that snaps to the tip of your uh, line so start by by drawing the arc choose the two extremes of the arc and this vertex right here press s on your keyboard for a symmetric uh, constraint we will give it a radius of two millimeters because we need that so shift r on your keyboard for radius um, so let's just insert two millimeters and now it's time to choose our polyline tool and start sketching the outline of the pocket okay now that we're here right click to dismiss the tool and let's start again right click to dismiss the tool let's hide our polar pattern to better see the, the sketch select this edge here and um, the arc and press T on your keyboard for a tangent constraint let's do the same for this edge here and the arc T on your keyboard for a um, tangency constraint In another construction line that unites these two verte vertexes and will give it a dimension of uh, four millimeters shift D four millimeters and we have our sketch fully constrained uh, again close the sketch unhide uh, the polar pattern and again we will make the actual pocket that needs to be symmetric to plane and uh, through all click ok again we will take advantage of the symmetry of our um, workpiece so uh, by selecting the last uh, feature of our body we will create a polar pattern that needs to be around the base y-axis for instances now let's click ok and take a better look uh, at our aluminum extrusion it is now time to execute execute the center hole of our object as before we will create a new sketch always on the xz plane let's uh, change our toolbar to normal uh, geometry choose the circle tool right click to dismiss our tool click the circle shift r to give it a, a radius and that will be eight millimeters okay close the sketch and go ahead to execute our pocket always symmetric to plane and the type will be through all click ok if we look uh, at our extrusion uh, you can see that uh, we have these 10 small ridges that uh, would be half a millimeter that would have a half a millimeter edge and we have 10 instances of them so let's move to the front view create a new sketch we'll choose the xz plane okay i will create a rectangle select these two edges and make them equal we'll give it a symmetry to the y-axis of uh, our sketch so s on your keyboard for symmetry and we'll have this edge be something like one milli, uh, millimeter in length so shift v for a vertical constraint uh, i need to have a distance between between this vertex and this vertex of 7.5 millimeters so shift v on your keyboard and type 7.5 okay close the sketch and let's pad our small ridge we will make it symmetric to plane we will give it the same dimension as our extrusion and that is 200 millimeters click ok to exit uh, the the pad uh, task panel move to the front view and we will create another polar pa pattern I know that we have 10 instances of this uh, small extrusion so I will always choose the base y-axis and I need to have 10 instances. 
click OK to exit the task panel. Using the link stage 3 branch, we can actually click on the shadow mode uh, display to bring up the light uh, manipulator so we can actually better shade our scene. Press escape to, regis uh, to register your, ch your change. We are now pretty much done with uh, our model, but uh, we can give it some finishing touches. If we take a closer look of, uh, at our model, we see that we have these small fillets uh, here, inside here and here, all around uh, it. And also we have um, these uh, ridges that go the length uh, of our extrusion. If you click this icon here, you can actually select the selection on top option. Let's select nothing, select this one and by taking, uh, by pressing the control button, let's go ahead and uh, select all the edge edges that we need to fill it around our model. Now choose the fillet tool, click OK. Let's create a new sketch that's on the X, uh, XZ plane, OK. Import an edge from our uh, last fillet and draw uh, two rectangles. We need these four edges to be equal. We will always try to take advantage of the symmetry of uh, our objects. So we will give it a length of uh, two mil perhaps uh, two millimeters. So shift H for horizontal, two millimeters. I need to make this vertex and this vertex symmetric to the y-axis of our sketch, so press S for uh, symmetric. I want this vertex and this vertex to have a distance shift H of uh, 15 millimeters. Click the create fillet uh, between two lines uh, tool and we will create four fillets. Right click to dismiss the tool, select all of your fillets. And by pressing E on your keyboard, make them equal. Now I need this uh, vertex to be tangent uh, with our external uh, geometry. So press Shift O for tangency. Let's uh, just hide our uh, piece for a moment to see how it looks. Okay, close the sketch and let's pocket this. Symmetric to plane through all. Now, of course, uh, to have uh, the same feature of the model all ar around our extrusion, we'll do the same drill. We will choose a polar pattern around the y-axis and we need four in instances. Click OK and exit the sketch. All right, folks, so uh, as you can see, although this seems uh, like a really complex geometry, we took uh, great advantage of the symmetry of our component here and it was not that difficult to, uh, to model. Hoping that this uh, was of uh, help. Uh, I thank you for resting uh, till the end and I'll see you in the next one.